Hey, are you a business owner, entrepreneur, or professional? If so, we want you to apply to be a featured guest on our show. My name is Adam Torres, and I host the Mission Matters series of podcasts. I've recorded over 3,000 episodes, and we are just getting started. How do you know if you'd be a good guest to be on the show? Well, only one way to find out, and that's to apply, but I'm going to let you in on a little secret. We want guests that have a story to tell, guests with a brand, a product, or a service that can benefit my audience of listeners. If this sounds like you, go to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. I'd love to talk to you and get to know more about your story. Again, head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, now let's get into the show. Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Mission Matters, your source for all things business. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres. Keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, signings, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, missionmatters.com, and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, so today I have Kevin Snedden on the line. He's Founder and Managing Director at the Private Client Team and Network at Compass. Kevin, welcome to the show. Hi, Adam. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Uh, great to have you on and uh, excited to get into today's topic. I mean, you have a unique uh, vantage point over there at Compass. I mean, big company, very well known. Um, and today we're going to talk about the, the, the COVID impact on residential real estate. Um, so I, I guess one of the one of the um, places that we should start is, you know, I mean, what have you been seeing? I mean, how, how's the market been overall? It's been it's been incredibly unique and, and dynamic. You know, I think everybody everywhere in the world due to COVID has sort of had a deep think about, you know, how they want to live and where they want to live. Everybody. Mm. Let's talk about the luxury real estate market where I know that you, uh, that you really specialize in. I mean, um, so what, what, what has the movement been like that in that, in that market? Yeah. So, you know, the luxury market where the, the, the buyers and sellers, uh, you know, have wherewithal, you know, they have a freedom to, to move um, about, you know, so if the mm -hmm. things, that, if the quality of life isn't ideal and where they are, like, for example, in Manhattan, uh, which COVID was really centered around uh, New York City, you know, back in March and April of 2020, people with wherewithal exited Manhattan. <laughs> they went mm -hmm. to the Hamptons and Aspen and Palm Beach and, and just really that, that, you know, living conditions weren't, weren't ideal. So they sort of moved the party elsewhere. Um, yeah. No, no, totally. And I see that. Um, and I, and I've heard that. And I mean, we, we read about New Yorkers, um, leaving the city. Um, now I think, I guess, um, you know, as we're recording this, by the way, so, um, for, for our listeners, so recording this towards the end of May and, you know, so numbers in certain cities are down. Like, have, have you noticed people coming back a little bit more? I mean, or are we, what are you, what, are you, what has been your pulse on the market? But yeah, people, you know, a lot of people made permanent moves because of COVID, but a lot of people made temporary moves. So the people that made temporary moves, for, for example, a lot of New Yorkers went out mm -hmm. to the Hamptons and they went to Palm Beach and Aspen, and they've now discovered that those are great areas to vacation in, but those are maybe not the right place to live permanently. So now when New York is pretty much back open for business, mm -hmm. We're seeing people, you know, come back, and the New York real estate market has really rebounded in the last 90 days. It's really like a hot market now. It's joined the rest of the country, you know, in terms mm -hmm. of the luxury markets that are all seem to be on fire right now, and, and we're incredibly busy in New York, and we expect by this September, which is when most of the big companies are calling all their employees back to the office, that New York's going to be, like, fully open, you know, this fall. So, so, so we're excited about that. Wow, finally, that is exciting. And I'm in LA, and I uh, and I can feel like the energy is different. Um, things are it'll be interesting to see what happens uh, over this holiday weekend we're going into. But energy is different. A lot of people have come back, and it just feels like everything's opening back up. So, will be interesting to see um, how, how all of this plays out. So, there's some. Um, so, if somebody's out there right now, and they're in the, you know, they're they're in the market. I mean, what are some of the necessities that um, buyers would require due to COVID, or what, or what are, or what are some of the things they should know? 
Yeah, I think this is like a, a permanent sort of paradigm shift. I think in buyers' mindset, people's mindset, they, you know, feel like there could be another pandemic in, you know, next year or in three or five years. So I think people in their minds want to be equipped for that. Now, there are some people that their definition of that is they live in a city that have to have a weekend house, right? And there are some people that say, no, I, I just want to, I don't want to live in an apartment anymore. I don't want to have to deal with another lockdown, so I need a house. And then if someone's already in a house, chances are they need a larger house because they need a place for their kids to homeschool. They need a place to work. They need a, they need a home gym. They need a home theater for entertainment. So people want so much more out of their homes these days um, it's really incredible, and so people are m- making moves accordingly in every market in the country. Yeah, who would have thought? You need you need a, you need a homeschooling room now. Of, in terms of like maybe yeah. you would have thought then the private school, other things. But what happens when everything's gone? Um, it's a it really really different shift in mindset. And I like how you said um, the home theaters and things like that because uh, I went to I went to the theater the other day and uh, watched a new movie that came out, and I'm like, wow, it feels so interesting to be in a theater again. <laughs> it's like yeah. it was like a, it was like a whole new experience. And I'm like, I don't know which one I like better. I mean, I'm here, it's new, um, and it feels good to be back. But uh, you're right; it is a different thing. Um, it's interesting. What are some of the um, the hot luxury markets that you're seeing due to COVID? Just whether it's in the New York area, or just nationwide. What are you What are you seeing there on, on just hot markets? Yeah, there's sort of like two two dynamics going on in terms of like ultra wealthy people. They they've sort of descended upon Tony markets where they're in a little safe bubble. <laughs> so Palm Beach, you know, Aspen, the, the Hamptons, even uh, Greenwich, Connecticut. So these are these, like I said, these Tony markets, they're ultra high end and people, they feel there's a, people feel safe there, right? And they're surrounded by other very wealthy people and the, and the markets are small. So there's not too, there's not too high a concentration of people. So, um, and they're gorgeous places to spend time, right? So for all those reasons, those markets, they're the hottest markets in, in the country and yeah, parts of California fit into that. Uh, as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, Aspen is really extremely hot. Uh, Palm Beach is really extremely hot. Parts of LA and um, places like Greenwich and, and out east in the Hamptons. And then there are other markets, you know, like Austin and uh, Nashville, where Austin's become kind of a tech hub. It's been drawing a lot of people from California and every market in Texas. And then if you go to Florida and Tennessee, no state income tax lower cost of living, nice weather, the fact that you can work remote has freed up people to make moves to those markets as destinations that they've always considered living in. So those markets are really hot right now. Awesome. So tell us a little bit more about the private client team and network um, over at Compass. So what what you specialize in, your team, um, areas, geography. Give us a little bit of that background. Yeah, sure. So for my my private client brand is basically a promise to elevate the the broker uh, experience for clients. So you know I deal with a lot of you know ultra high end clients that that you know that are discerning people and and have special needs and we service those folks at a, at a high level and i i've taken it to multiple markets because people like to travel with a good broker so markets that are connected you know i started working in manhattan and then dealing in the hamptons and i'm dealing with the same clients in multiple markets and now our team is primarily new york city and um greenwich which is where i live and those markets are you know very connected when covid hit last year you know, people fled New York City and a lot of them came to Greenwich. So we were able to be on the receiving end of that and understood where they're coming from and can help them what whatever they needed to do to, you know, sell or rent their homes in New York City and then find them a new home in Greenwich. And I came to Compass in 2018 to launch not only this team, but this network. And I've partnered, I've partnered with like-minded top brokers in 40 luxury markets across the country all within Compass to create the private client network. And we provide a seamless experience for a client that, you know, has a portfolio of three to five plus residential properties. So if someone came to us and said, I want a townhouse in New York City and a ski house in Aspen and a condo in Miami, the private client network could handle that in a seamless way. And that's an elevated level of service that you really can't find in residential real estate today. 
That's awesome. So, Kevin, if somebody is listening to this right now and they want to learn more about working with you and your team, I mean, what's the best way for them to reach out and do that? Yeah, they can They can just – we have a website, uh, the privateclientnetwork.com. Our private client team website is privateclientbrokers.com. I'm kevin.snedden at compass.com. Um, feel free to get in touch, and we'd be happy to help you anywhere in the U.S. Fantastic. Well, Kevin, really appreciate you coming on the show today and sharing more about um, all the great work that you're doing over there at Compass and giving us some updates on the real estate market and what and what people are doing in New York and otherwise and what markets are hot. So great conversation there. And to the audience, as always, thank you for tuning in. Hope you got a lot of value out of this. If you did, don't forget, hit that subscribe button. We definitely want you to be a return uh, listener and visitor. And Kevin, thanks again for coming on the show. It's been a pleasure. Sure, thanks. Loved it, Adam. Thanks.